And we're live at Bangor Christian Schools. This is pre-calculus. And I can't get my window to work here. Canvas, white background. There we go. Partial fractions is the lesson. So I'm going to take the first example here. x plus 7 divided by x squared minus x minus 6. Okay. So we're a Christian school, so before we start, we're going to pray for the Lord's guidance. So let's do that now. Father, thank you for today. I thank you for each and every student you've given me. And I pray now that as we go through partial fractions, that you would help me to explain it in a way that's understandable and retainable. I give you praise for Jesus and what he did on the cross. Help us not to take that for granted. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here's the goal. I want to take this fraction... And can I break it up into the sum of simpler fractions? That's the goal, okay? That's the focus. So first thing I do here is I take the denominator and I factor the denominator. So this particular denominator factors into 2, 3, x plus 2 times x minus 3. So the denominator is factored, okay? Now, the question is this. Can this one right here, Joshua, be broken up into the sum of two simpler fractions? Question. Do I know what those fractions uh, look like? Do I, look, do I know what the numerators look like on those fractions? I don't. So for right now, I simply acknowledge that one of the fractions will be something I'll call capital A over x plus 2 plus capital B over x minus 3. The only role that the A and the B have is I simply don't know what they are. Does that make sense? So this is the gold tailor. I want to know if I can break this fraction up into the sum of two simpler fractions. That's the goal. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cross multiply this right here. So when I cross multiply, I get a x minus 3 plus b x plus 2 all over x plus 2 x minus 3. And this now looks more like this fraction here, x plus 7 over x plus 2, x minus 3. So I've made this look more like what I started with, okay? All right, what property is used now? Distributive, distributive property. So what happens, Michaela, is I take this and I distribute, and I get ax minus 3a and I get bx plus 2b all over x plus 2 x minus 3 equals x plus 7 over x plus 2 x minus 3. Okay, now I want to get rid of the denominators so I'm hunting for the LCD, the least common denominator. So what is the thing that I can multiply the equation through and get rid of the denominators? x minus 2 and x plus 3. x plus 2, x minus 3. Uh -huh. See, if I multiply the entire equation by that, x plus 2, x minus 3, what happens is the denominators just divide out. And that leaves me with, now what I'm going to do next here, Joshua, is I'm going to gather my like terms here, okay? So this leaves me with a plus b times x plus 2b minus 3a equals x plus 7. Has my gathering like terms made sense to you? What I've done for gathering like terms? Why would it cancel out if they're the same? I thought you had to get rid of complex Does it make sense? Uh, you're thinking of getting rid of a complex number in the denominator. That's when we would use the conjugate. It's kind of like taking this, this equation here, Michaela, 2 sevenths 
plus 3 sevenths equals 5 sevenths. Now what can I multiply that equation through by to get rid of the denominator? By the number 7, and it gets rid of all of the denominators. Now is 2 plus 3 equal to 5? This is the exact same idea. Does that make sense? All right, Taylor, here's the beautiful thing. Whatever a plus b is, it has to be 1. Does that make sense? And whatever 2b minus 3a is, what does 2 by 2b minus 3a have to be? 7. Seven. Do you see what, we're, what we have now? We have two linear equations, two unknowns. Elimination or substitution? We get to choose. So I'm going to save this now. So let's export as a file. Pre-calc notes 1. There we go. Okay. Can I erase this right now? Okay. So that means that A plus B has to be the number 1. And um, is it 2B minus 3A? Is that what I had? Yeah. So I'm going to write it like this. Negative 3A plus 2B has to be 7. And what I have are two linear equations. This is called a system of linear equations. What are the three ways we can use to solve a system of linear equations? Elimination, Elimination graphing, graphing substitution. substitution. What is the least reliable way? Graphing. graphing. It's reliable if what happens? You have two perfect integer solutions. Maybe, Courtney, one of the solutions is a fraction like 2.5 you can find half your way through something. But if, if one of the numbers is 2.3, there's no way you can look at it visually and say, well, that's got to be 2.3, right? Mm -hmm. So graphing, unfortunately, is the least reliable. Elimination is my favorite, so I'm going to use elimination. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by 3, and I get 3a plus 3b equals 3. Do you know what my motivation is for this? Yes, to eliminate one of the variables. And which variable is going to be eliminated? A. The A variable. So now this is gone. What's left over? 5B equals 10. Uh-oh, we just solved it. B has to be 2. Which means that capital A has to be what? Negative 1. We just solved it. So the answer is yes. Can x plus 7 divided by x squared minus x minus 6 be broken up into the sum of two simpler fractions? Yes. It can be broken up into negative 1 over x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 3. Now if you cross multiply here, which I will do, you should get the same thing. So this becomes, let's just do this as a check to see if we really did this right. This becomes negative 1 times x minus 3 plus 2 times x plus 2 all over x plus 2 times the x minus 3. Now I use the distributive property, so negative x plus 3 plus 2x plus 4 over x plus 2, x minus 3. Combine like terms, I get x plus 7 in the numerator. And so now everything is checked. It worked. So we'll put a green check mark here to say that our check worked. Did that make sense? And that's the goal of the lesson, Taylor. Can we take a fraction and break it apart into the sum of simpler fractions. Now I'm going to use the word sum, okay? This right here is a negative 1. So what I could have done, Abby, as an alternate answer is I could have said 2 over x minus 3 minus 1 over x plus 2, and it's the same result. I'm still going to use the word sum because I can write this as the sum of a negative if I wanted to. In other words, I could say this is plus negative 1 over x plus 2.
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to do another one. Does this make sense? How did the book do without writing anything out? How did the book do without what? Do this problem without writing anything out. Without writing anything out. They literally just have x plus 7 over x squared minus x minus 6 equals and then their answer. Um, they probably did, well, they did exactly what I did, but they probably just did two steps in one at some place. How do you do that? Well, I did it one step at a time. The book probably just did two steps together. All right, let's take the next one. What number is this? Uh, this is example two x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 20x plus 6 all over x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. You tell me what's the goal. Break it apart. Break it apart into the sum two simpler fractions. Abby, the first thing I notice is that the power of the numerator is larger than the denominator. Therefore, I have to long divide first. So if the power of the numerator is larger than the power of the denominator, then you need to long divide. All right, so x cubed plus 2x squared plus x divided into x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 20x plus 6. Begin. What do I have to multiply x cubed by to get x to the fourth? X. x. So now I multiply everything here in the divisor by x. Everything here by x. So x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared. Parentheses subtraction. What is x to the fourth minus x to the fourth? Those cancel away. What is 2x cubed minus 2x cubed? What is 6x squared minus x squared? Now carry this down. Now, is the, is the power here greater than the power of the denominator? No. If it was the same, I would long divide again. But it's not. It's less. So Joshua, what I've just done is I've taken this and I've broken it up into x plus 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 divided by x cubed plus 2x squared plus x. This part is the quotient, and this is the remainder, divided by the divisor. That's the division algorithm. All right. Time to factor as much as possible the denominator and the numerator. So I will factor the denominator. Factoring the denominator gives me x times x squared plus 2x plus 1. Does that make sense? This here is a perfect square. This becomes x times x plus 1 squared. Does the numerator factor? Well, maybe. 
And I realize now that I've kind of jumped ahead and I shouldn't have jumped ahead. So I'm only going to factor the denominator. So if you'll let me, Katie, I'm going to cross out this possibility. I'm just not going to do it. Okay. Now the question is, can I break this up into simpler fractions? Now let's look at the denominator here. So this becomes x plus 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 all divided by x times x plus 1 squared. Are we okay with that so far? Now I need to see if I can break this up into simpler fractions. And I notice right here, Michaela, that this is a power of 2. What this means is, is because this repeats twice, I have a combination of three different fractions. Here it is. Yeah. Because that's the quotient. That's the quotient. The quotient is how many times this went into the polynomial here. So if you take, for example, the number 27 and you divide it by 5, how many times does 5 go into 27? Five times. With the remainder of, so that means that 27 fifths can be rewritten as 5 plus 2, two fifths. And that's exactly what happened here. This is the quotient. All right. I'm going to look at the denominator again. This is a power 2, right? All right. Joshua, if this happens, this means that my combination will be first a over x for this. Now I have to consider a first power as a possibility b over x plus 1 and then lastly c over x plus 1 squared. So when you have a power you have to consider all the possibilities up to that power. Why would you square the last time? Because you want all possible denominators that divide into this. So what are the denominators or what are the values that divide into x times x plus 1 squared? Well first of all does x divide into x times x plus 1 squared? Yes. Does x plus 1 divide into x times x plus 1 squared? Yes. If you do that what do you have left over? x times x plus 1. Does x plus 1 squared divide into x times x plus 1 squared? Yes. So you have to consider the different ways that can divide into this. And that's why we have three options here. Okay? All right. So now, do you have this written down? Because you're probably going to have to tell me what you get. All right. Export. This is pre-calc notes number three. No. Nope. It's three. So, Okay. Here's what we have, Michaela. We have that 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 over x times x plus 1 squared equals a over x plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1 squared. There's no needing the x. You don't need the quotient piece anymore because we've got that part finished. That part's done. Okay? You only need the remainder part, and this is the remainder part. Now, what is the LCD? What's the least common denominator I can multiply this whole thing through by to get rid of the denominators? That's exactly right. So let's do that. So this becomes 5x squared plus 20x plus 6 equals a times what? x plus 1 squared. Because what divided out? The x. 
plus b times x, x plus 1. What happened there? The x plus 1 divided out. How many did we have? One of them divided away. How many do we have left? Plus CX. CX is correct. Foiled again. Got to foil that out. So this becomes two, uh, AX squared plus 2AX plus A. So if I foil that out and then distribute the A, that's what I get. Plus BX squared plus BX plus CX. Joshua, it's time to combine like terms. So I get A plus B X squared plus 2A plus B plus C X plus A and that has to equal 5X squared plus 20X plus 6. What does that say about A plus B? A plus B has to equal 5. What does that say about 2A plus B plus C? What does that say about A? Oh, oh, oh. A, she is equal to the 6 because there's no other possibility, yes? I have no idea why I talk like this. Okay, so A is equal to 6, which means if A is equal to the number 6, we know what B has to be. One. I mean negative 1. Negative 1. Now we know what C has to be. 2 times 6 is 12 minus 1 is... 11, 11 plus what is 20? 9. C has to be 9. Joshua, this is what we call in mathematics beautiful. That worked out wonderfully. Yeah. How did you get the negative 1 for B again? How did I get the negative 1 for B? Well, has to be five. Yeah, A plus B has to be 5. We already know that A has to be 6, and 6 plus what is? 5. Well, guess what, Abby? That means that this, the final answer becomes, remember, what was the quotient from the division when I did the division? X. X. So 6, negative 1, 9. So now I'll just save this, export. And that means that the final answer is equal to x plus 6 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 plus 9 over x plus 1 squared. How do we get that answer? Where's the x plus 6? Where does the x come from? That is the quotient, not the remainder, that is the quotient from long division. So when Taylor finds the quotient, she doesn't need to do anything more with the quotient. She needs to concentrate, put all of her energies on the remainder. And there's the answer. That was weird. Tonight's homework. Yes. Yes. Um, 
Why is this not x plus 1? The last, the last one. The last one? Why is it not x plus 1? Because y times it, um, y times there, x times x plus 1 times x plus 1. There's two seconds, it's not equal to x plus 1. Yeah, it's not equal to x plus 1. Do 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 This works. I know I haven't answered your question yet. I know that this works. This goes back together in the original problem. X to the fourth plus two x cubed plus six x squared plus twenty x plus six all over x cubed plus two x squared plus x. That goes into that. Um, why do I not have an x here in this denominator? Is that your question? Um, well, I mean, what's the second times not the x plus 1? Why this? No, the next one. The next one. Why is it not x plus 1? Why is x plus 1 squared? Well, then that would make these two fractions a common denominator, which would make it negative 8 over x plus 1. And that would change the problem. These denominators have to be different. If that was just an x plus 1 with no square, then the, you can combine these two fractions into a simpler fraction. You, you got each of those by multiplying things together to see what you can get with the starting with, right? Correct. First thing what I do is I have to find the LCD. Multiply the entire equation through by the LCD. All right, so tonight, we just started with this, okay? So, page 536 is the page we're on. And what I want you to try and do now is numbers 1 through 17, just the odds because the answers are in the back. And then I would like you to try numbers 16 and 18 on your own. So first, numbers 1 through 17, the odds, and then 16 through 18. Okay? Wait, 16 and 18 or 16? Yeah, 16. 16 and 18. This has been Pre-Calculus at Bangor Christian Schools 2015, Lesson 7.4, Partial Fractions. I'm Mr. Partridge. God bless you wherever you are today.